Hello, everybody, um, and welcome back to a new webinar. I am looking uh, very much forward to it because um, it's actually demonstrating the new capabilities of Excel Wings, and it's uh, basically, you know, giving you an insight into a tool that I actually use myself for my own little um, internal tools. So I'm pretty excited to get this started. So let me find the slides here. Um, all right. So yeah, before before I uh, want to jump into the main part of the presentation, I just wanted to make sure to call out a, a few things. So yeah, definitely the, the webinar will be recorded. That's usually one of the hottest uh, question you will get always uh, uh, right after the, the webinar or like over the next couple of hours, you will get an email with the recording. And uh, you can always use the chat for, for questions. I will try to get to them at the very end of the webinar. So I don't have a moderator here on, on, on the show. So I'm actually not going to read them while I'm doing the presentation. So need to be a bit patient there. Um, then I sort of like want to be, you know, um, I want to appreciate your time. So I just want to make sure that you are in, in the right webinar. So I've been doing, giving webinars and, 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 and talks about Excel and Python over the last eight years. So just not to confuse anybody, this webinar today is going to be exclusively about Google Sheets, which uh, Excel Wings has started to support just uh, very recently. It's not that you could not like use any of the things I'm showing today in the Excel world, because for most part, uh, Excel Wings is you know, cross-platform compatible, but really today's target, today's focus is on exclusively those features that only Google Sheets has. So um, time for you to jump off if Google Sheets is, is not on your radar. Then I sort of like uh, noticed that maybe I was not giving this webinar the best possible title, so it could be misunderstood, I thought. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to give you a way of building a web app where um, Google Sheets may be used as a data store, as, as, a, as a database. That's a, a functionality you do also see from time to another on blog posts. So that's not what this session today is about. This session is going to be about uh, building a web web app backend and then using Google Sheets as the front end. So we don't need to use any of the front end technologies ourselves. Then also, uh, this is going to be a high level webinar. I also try to not make it too long. So I'm targeting somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes, if possible. So I want to give you uh, an overview of, of what's possible in, in the Google Sheets slash Python world. I do not want to go into single lines of code with a few exceptions. Um, you will get you know, access. I have all, all, all the projects open source. You can look at them and get uh, the details, uh, dig into the details after the call, after the webinar. And then finally, uh, my last pre-comment here, uh, what we're going to use today is basically the remote interpreter. The remote interpreter is part of the pro package. The pro package, however, is free for personal or non-commercial use and comes with developer plans for commercial use, which, by the way, uh, has helped me so far to actually add these new features. Okay, so uh, that much about this introduction, um, the pre-introduction, so to say. So for the rest of the talk, what I've planned is a short intro about myself and then just giving you a quick basics about how Excel Wings works in the context of a web app and in the context of Google Sheets. And then we're actually jumping into two demos. One is um, building or we're, we're seeing how we can build a GitHub issues dashboard. So we're going to look at all the issues of, of the Excel Wings project. And it's a typical use case I see. Um, so we can go into some of the particularities of Google Sheets on, on, on that point. And then um, the point four is basically another little demo 
which goes into authentication and authorization. That's sort of like one of the main advantages or like one of the main selling points, I believe, um, you get by, by using Google Sheets here. And then if time allows, um, I say a few words about development and deployment, but this is not going to be definitely not going to be the focus of, of, of today. So just a few words about myself. I did uh, basically create the project eight years ago. And I'm super excited really to sort of like um, now move the project into the modern sort of uh, Python stack. So obviously Python 3, but mostly also the, the async capabilities that we get. Um, we will have a bit of a look into that in, in today's webinar as, uh, also. Um, then I did write a book uh, more recently that is just called Python for Excel. Um, the Google Sheets support didn't exist back then. So we will see about in the future if that changes, but definitely uh, still a lot of things, like even if you're a Google Sheets user, still a lot of things that you can profit from. And um, it's, it's really an introductory book, right? So it, it introduces you to the Python basics, core basics to Pandas, and then it also goes through the various packages that you can use to read and write Excel files. And it's only literally just like a third of the book that is Excel Wings specific. And then finally, before we get started, I'm also the CEO of a company called Excel Trail. And Excel Trail is basically bringing you the power of Git version control to Excel workbooks. And so if you are you know, using a lot of heavy weight and, and very important workbooks with a lot of VBA code or, 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 or power queries, then um, that is sort of a, a, an easy way of um, tracking what's going on in your sheet. So, you know, tracking the formulas and, and seeing um, who introduced the bug and, and, and when and why that happened. Okay, so before I actually go into, uh, I'll share my screen and, and, and get started with one of these first demos. I thought we, you know, I just want to bring everybody to the same page and, and spend some minimal amount of time on the very basics. And so Google Sheets is obviously living in the cloud. So uh, the traditional way of Excel Wings uh, doesn't work for obvious reasons. So what you have to use is, is the remote interpreter, which means you are really building a web app backend and an API that lives somewhere in the cloud eventually for production. Um, but for development, obviously, this can still be local. Now, to do that, we're going to use a, a web uh, framework. And I've uh, put, well, some of the most popular on here. And you can literally any uh, use any of these. So uh, even if you if you're a fan of a, of a small one like Bottle or w whatever there is out there, it's always going to work because it's it's completely framework agnostic. But um, I slightly made the Fast API logo a, li a little bit bigger for the reasons that this is the, the the framework I'm going to use today. That's the framework I'm using for my own stuff, and I believe it's it's. Uh, it, well, it, it, I personally prefer it over the other frameworks, in, you know, for much in terms of um, API and, and, and how it works. But it's also uh, basically built from the ground up to 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 leverage the modern Python, uh, the the modern Python uh, features like async I/O and the the type hinting. So that's like an integral part of Fast API. And uh, so some of the like some of the advantages we get by doing this, uh, we will see in, in, in the first demo. And so this is actually the last slide before we get started. So this is really just what's going to happen. So we are talking from the, the JavaScript environment in Google Sheets to the Python backend on our server. And um, it sort of like really works as as the classic run Python call in in VBA if you've used that previously. Only that now um, instead of like um, you know an import module uh, and and module dot function statement, you give it really just a, a, an API like an endpoint a URL where your server lives, and that's pretty much it. 
And then other than that, you wrap it into like an endpoint of your web framework. Again, I'm showing the fast API version here. But um, between that boilerplate code, you can you know, write or copy paste, basically take over your, your traditional Excel Wings code and use it as, as previously. So that just you know, makes it really uh, a, a no brainer for you to program Google Sheets very much the same way as you would uh, use the traditional Excel Wings or use it with Excel. And that's, that's pretty much it. So that's enough of, of an introduction, I believe. And I want to show you a, a very basic tool that sort of like, and, and, and then go through some of the highlights of, of, of uh, like what it really does. And so to give you um, a chance to like maybe follow along if, if there is something for you of interest, I am uh, just chatting the uh the the code the repository of 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 the code that i'm going to showcase now basically of that app and um you can definitely bookmark it and and follow along and so yeah at this point let me actually switch to the um, desktop behind this and um yeah pull up a, a what I think of a very uh, standard dashboard that you could build, and I mean, when when you use Excel Wings to 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 build a tool or let's say Python in general, I mean, one of the big uh, one of the big like smashing like you know powerful features you get is that you can connect with any other system super easily and so obviously github um does have a um an api to to get access to to the issues for example and i can then easily build my custom logic based on what i really want to see because let's let's face it i mean the the issues um capabilities on, on github are are sort of like um limited and so what what how this works is like i click on this button and what happens now, as, as we speak, we have the Python Go, go to the GitHub API and query, uh, make 20 um, API queries. And um, that's what I mentioned before from like, you know, leveraging the modern uh, Python stack. Um, so it does that asynchronously. It, it fetches all the 20, um, the 20 calls at the same time using a, a async IO. And that basically means, as you could see, like in a couple of seconds, I get the, you know, the, the full, it's basically 2000, 2000 um, records. I have them analyzed in pandas. So I get this aggregated number of issues over the whole, um, you know, lifetime of, of Excel wings. And I can, you know, create additional um, information that I will not see on the GitHub page. And also like what it also did is it pasted all the open issues here in, in a separate tab. And so like, uh, it's actually super convenient for me now to go through these 200 um, issues and pick one that maybe I wanna work at next. And so like, you can also then include, you know, the original um, link to the original issue. And obviously, I mean, this is just a showcase. I mean, this is just a demo app, but to be honest, um, this part is actually already quite convincing because it 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 isn't really convenient to to dig through 200 issues on on the GitHub page. Okay, so that's like from a user's perspective um, how things work. And as you could see, um, you 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 get access to some pretty powerful uh, stuff here. And let me actually like pull up the the slides here. Um, get to where we left it. So a couple of things I want to point out. Um, as I said, we're going to stay high level, but still uh, a few things are worth pointing out. So first of all, the um, apps script or the, 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 the JavaScript part of, um, of Excel Wings, of Google Sheets, where the Excel Wings module will be pasted, 
is um, accessible if you go here on extensions and then click on apps script. So you will, it's a bit like the VBA editor. It opens up uh, a new tab here. And um, what you can do on Google Sheets is you can actually totally have multiple files here. So you can have one, um, one module for Excel wings. And you would usually get that by just um, typing Excel wings, uh, copy GS for, for Google Sheets on, on the command prompt. And then you can paste that in the same version as you use on the backend. And then you can use another separate module to uh, you know, get all your um, calls to, or to, to compile all the run Python calls. So that's uh, about the organization here. And then there is uh, different ways that you can invoke your backend code. And I uh, want to go through them one, one by one. So the obvious way, or like let's say the, the way that I like using it uh, during development is, is here, right here in the apps script environment. So what you can do is uh, you select the, the, the one, the, the you know the call you wanna you wanna execute, and then you click on on the run button here, and then so it it runs, um, and then you can check back and see you know if it if it worked, or you can have the you know both side by side. So that's like a convenient thing to do when you are like developing code. Then uh, what you've already seen, like the option I went for uh, in this case, is using a button. Um, a button is basically you go here, you say insert drawing, you create the drawing, and then once you have that drawing, uh, you click on those three dotted points here and say assign script. And then you just have to type the name um, here of the GitHub issues, the, the, the function that I used to call the run Python function. Now, a third option is to actually create such a um, custom custom extension. And so I've called it GitHub Update Dashboard. And that is also super easy to do. So um, this is basically demonstrated down here. It's a few lines of the apps script code. You basically just need to tell it what the name of the menus are. Um, and then which function it's going to call, and that allows you, uh, on, you know, in al alternatively to the to the button to have this custom menu um, loading up. Um, then another uh, an, another option would be like a sidebar. Unfortunately, I couldn't make this work. So either there is a bug in in in, in Google or. I just couldn't make it work. So if somebody uh, happens to to make it work, definitely let me know. If I manage to to make this work or get confirmation that there is actually a, a few issues going on, then I will um, definitely let you know too. And then finally, what you can do is if you want to build tools uh, for external deployment or like for really professional deployments, then you could also create an add-on. But an add-on is usually uh, much more work. Uh, you usually then have to approve it by Google and they then will put it in basically the add-on store so everybody can install it. It's definitely an option too, but for most of the time, I guess it's going to be either a button or a custom menu and that brings you very far. Now, the last point here is triggers. Triggers are a very powerful way of also um, using or scheduling the run of, of your scripts. And um, I'm actually going to show, uh, show you here how, how this works. So again, you are going to go into extension apps script to, to end up in the apps script environment. And over here, you do have a triggers menu, which allows you to put in um, automatic runs of, of your, of your uh, code. So for example, I have one here, or uh, we, could, we could add a new one. So basically you select, you select the, um, the, the function that you want to run. Uh, that's usually the head, like latest version. You then say, you have different categories for like when it should run. So for example, you can say when the spreadsheet is being opened, um, automatically run the code to update the spreadsheet. There's a couple of different ones. You can use a calendar, but I guess um, the most, uh, you know, the most 
the most popular option is probably the timer. So you, you can basically use, create like a cron job environment in here. And uh, you can say that it should run every hour, like every, every day, specific dates even. Um, so there's a very, very great flexibility here. And if the code fails, like if the run fails, you can also be notified by uh, email and you can choose like if you want to have like a daily or weekly digest or like if it's super important, then probably you want to um, choose to notify me immediately. Now, I've done that um, already for 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 this, uh, the, the Git, GitHub issues uh, function previously. So um, it, it's quite quite great because you can actually then go into executions and you can actually look at the past executions, how long it took, um, whether you know they ran successfully or not. And we can see that I um, on purpose um, you know caused a, a failure in one of the last runs and then you will actually get uh, the, uh, the the error message down here so it's uh, super easy for debugging and um, you on top of that get an email with the same um, with the same error message so it's a really really nice system um, where you could have like employees schedule uh, the run of you know specific functions without having to go server side and, and set up maybe a complicated cron job. So that's a, a really, really good way of, 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 of um, automating these, uh, these, these runs. It's, it's reliable and you get, without any setup, you get email notifications if something fails. So it's pretty, pretty reliable. So that's pretty, pretty an awesome feature. I guess that's um, probably not, not known to, to many, many users of, of Google Sheets. All right, so let's see what else uh, we got here. Okay, so at this point, I would uh, like to um, show one, one of the details of error handling. So let's say I, um, I, I submit this, you know, this call, and obviously now I broke the, the button, but I can I can use it from here, so I can I can issue this call uh, without having to you know without having specified a a repository. And so what I do get um, nowadays um, in the latest version of of Excel Wings is is a very descriptive and easy way to handle that error message. So it tells me please provide a repo and the form owner slash repo. Um, and uh, so I can dismiss that. I mean, that's the standard, you know, Google Google Sheets error mechanism. And so this at this point, I just want to quickly highlight how you do that. So um, this is the source code. And basically the way that this is handled is here on the endpoint. Um, you simply have to raise an HTTP exception and whatever you provide here as the detail will be shown as that Google Sheets pop-up message. So I find that very, uh, very, very good, like very easy to manage um, the, the errors. And um, to make that all happen, uh, there is another little detail I need to show you. So like in the, in the main.py, there is the small section of error handling. And so basically those errors where you wanna show uh, you know, a detail um, are handled here. So basically what I currently handle is really just the HTTP exception. Um, just make that a little bit easier to, you know, to digest for, for the front end here. So that's sort of like almost um, no intervention. And then the other one is the Excel Wings error class. And so that's just sometimes helpful because you will often like end up having a different version of the the client in Google Sheets and uh, basically the Python package on the back end, and so by you know handling the Excel Wings error class here will then uh, give you a, a descriptive error and just call you out on 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 that on on that fact that you're using two different versions of 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 Excel Wings. Okay, so that's um, the error handling. Um, so before I guess before we move on, I do uh, definitely want to give you a quick overview, but as I said, not not going too much into details of of what's happening in in the backend code. 
So uh, for, for this time, really just have a look at, at the github.py, um, basically the endpoint, uh, the module that, that handles the endpoints. And here, uh, I guess, yeah, we just want to have a quick look at this function here. So it's called analyze issues. And it's sort of like, well, just an extended version of, of, the, of the Hello World sample. So I have these few sheets I'm reading out from, from Google Sheets. And then, you know, I do some, some pandas magic down here. So I aggregate uh, all the issues and, and, you know, basically create the, the data for that aggregated chart. And then below here, I mean, it's it's then really just spitting out uh, all those values. So uh, we, we got on the dashboard, like the two big uh, item counts, like issue counts, open and closed. Um, we got then on the chart for the chart. And then we get like the, the detailed issues. So that is all uh, plain vanilla Python stuff. Um, if you're interested, like if you scroll down below, then you, you can see that um, I'm using the HTTPX package here to fetch uh, the, that's actually below here. So like to fetch all those um, API calls in parallel. So these days that's, that's uh, you know, compared like to the old days where you have to use threading, that's super easy and safe to do. Um, Definitely interesting and uh, super easy to do if you use a, a, a framework like uh, Fast API. All right, so that is pretty much as, as deep as I want to go on, on this call for that that um, for that typical spreadsheet app. Uh, before we move on, here is sort of like a side remark uh, that uh, there is quotas on Google Sheets. So you have some maximum amounts of, you know, runtime triggers uh, and the data that you send back and forth with the with the backend. But uh, usually, like if you have a professional workspace, that's pretty, pretty much and probably gets you very far. Okay, um, then for the next uh, demo or sort of like the next. Uh, batch of explanations. Um, I want to look into another repository uh, that you can find over here. Let me also uh, paste that into the chat. So this uh, looks something like that. Uh, it's a super simple application. And I'm going to first again show you like what it's doing. And then um, I'm going to basically uh, give you a little bit of uh, background, like what's what's happening in the code or like how, how good you can integrate it. So first of all, authentication and authorization, uh, they sound similar. So basically authentication just means, uh, you know, is the user allowed to use the app, yes or no? And then authorization sort of like builds on top of that. So once the user is in the app, uh, you want to authorize it to commit certain actions, or you want to block uh, you want to block the user from doing certain things um, in 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 the app, where maybe you would need uh, to be an admin or in in a specific group to be able to use that functionality. And so. Let's maybe just have a, a, a quick look at the code before we hit that button. So we're going to see, we're going to basically um, run these three endpoints here. And so the, the first one, the hello one, is a, an endpoint which is just uh, protected by the, the router here. So basically the router that protects automatically all the different endpoints that I'm you know, pulling up on, on this module, which is super nice because I don't really have to uh, think about it and everything is going to be authenticated. Um, the, the way that this authentication happens is that if you have a look at basically the, uh, the apps script code, it uh, requires you to um, put in a token that it's dynamically fetching here in, in the, the 
the Google Apps script environment, which is super awesome because it means that there is no sensitive, um, no sensitive data here in the code. So I can give that to anybody. And all it does is it, it will take their um, you know, OAuth token the basically return the access token that we sent to the backend. And um, on the backend, and that's actually part of, 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 of that code here, it will be authenticated. So that particularly authentication will happen here under core and in the auth module. So you will see you have an authenticate um, functionality here. And okay, that's on the GitHub actually, that would be on, um, that correct repo um, here, because here you do actually have um, the authenticate endpoint, and then you do have also the authorize endpoint. And so the authentication is just going to basically verify that access points, sorry, the access, the access token, and verify that this is really you or who you are. And so basically, as uh, as, a, as a demo, so you click on that button, and it authenticates me because I have uh, in the settings basically said that all of my Google Workspace domain are allowed to use that uh, that app. So like if I would give anybody of you access to it, that would be blocked. You know, you would all be blocked because you're not part of my Workspace domain. And that's what happens in basically the code over here. Um, let me actually close that because we're really looking at this here. And um, so on the endpoint, uh, this is really just uh, being authenticated. It does its what, whatever you want it to do. And that's sort of like uh, the easiest use case. Now, uh, the second use case is actually, you then would like to have access to the user who has logged in. And so this example shows you how, how easy it is to really get access to, to the user object and then get, 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 his, you know, get the email um, and then do something with it. And so like when I click that say, uh, the second button, then as you can see, it returns my basically the uh, well, my my user ID, the ID, the user part of the of the email, um, which is quite nice because you know I know who clicks that button. So like if if I have this as an internal tool, I can now um, move on and and uh, allow people to do certain things or not. And that's precisely what I am going to do in that third um, in that third endpoint here. So that third endpoint. Um, is making uh, use of security scopes and security scopes is really just like a permissioning system. So you are requiring the user who uses that endpoint um, to have certain uh, permissioning available. And so what I'm doing is basically, this is from the settings. So I'm going to um, ask the user to be part of a specific user group. And in my case for the demo here, I have hooked it up to the Google directory, the Google groups of my workspace, because that is, you know, super easy for like for the administrator then to drop users into these groups and give them access to whatever they are supposed to have access to. And so like, if I go here and I click on that, I will get an error message because uh, it's missing my authorization. So it requires me to be in a Google group with that descriptive name API test. So, um, you know, whatever group that would be, uh, maybe an admin group or a database a writer group. Um, so I'm going to solve that now uh, in, in by going to the Google admin console. So basically the, let me just see if I'm still logged in. Yeah, I am. So I'm going here. So that is the, the API test group I, I created. And so all I need to do is now, you know, find me, add me to this group. And Google, you know, doesn't manage to auto reload that. <laughs> anyway, I'm now part of that group. And when I go back to my little sample here um, and I click on it, then it does let me through, right? So this time I am part of the group 
that is required by the security scope in, in my web framework. And this is like how easy it is for me to create uh, internal tools and give specific user groups uh, certain access rights and certain other user groups, uh, you know, block them from doing certain things. So, I mean, it, this could be like super helpful, let's say, for um, giving certain users access to read a database and then only other users give them access to actually update the database. So, uh, again, uh, you will find implementation in, in this demo project and um, Instead of using Google Groups, uh, you could use any of the other systems. Like you, you can, I mean, uh, the, the most basic implementation I have here would be like using environment variables where you like define the members of a group, or you can hook it up with any of the other uh, systems, you know, whether that's Okta, like single sign on, um, you can use a traditional LDAP server. So a really literally any um, system that manages your permissioning, um, you simply need to query that and, and give back the yes or no answer there. Okay, so let me see where we are. Um, I, I did mention that, uh, we, we went through that, just mentioned that one. And so I guess, yeah, so at this point, I can actually change back um, to the presentation here and jump to where we were. Right. So, yeah, at this point, um, I guess it's 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 worth doing a little uh, summary about the security here, because I think that's like one of the strongest points of coming up with uh, like basically connecting Google Sheets with with a Python backend. So, what you're basically ending up with is is a super secure environment. I mean, first of all, the user logs in, um, not you know, not with the Google credentials on a different page, but it they log in with their Google credentials on the Google infrastructure. So they are logged in 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 Google Sheets that is managed by Google. So that should be you know up to a certain standard. And then from there on, um, you you will have uh, spreadsheets. You would have Google Sheets that do not contain any sensitive code, like you know any business logic is on on the server side in Python. You can have all the sensitive data that don't need to be in the spreadsheet. You can have them in a in a properly secured database. Uh, you could have the the backend anonymized data if you want to show them on 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 the spreadsheet. And also the credentials for the sensitive systems, like for example, in this case, my GitHub access token, they are stored as secrets on, on whatever backend you're using, right? So there you have the possibility to properly secure these sensitive data. And so even if somebody, you know, if by accident you share the spreadsheet with somebody who shouldn't get it, like even then, Basically, all they can do is look at the data in the spreadsheet, but they cannot, they will not be able to run any of the functionality because you are only allowing users from your own workspace domain uh, to, to, to run the code. So I find that uh, is a super, super uh, strong selling point for using Google Sheets in connection with a true backend. And uh, then, yeah, so I guess we have a minute or two to basically summarize, um, just give you a high level overview of, of the, the development and, and deployment um, options that you have. So the development option is uh, sort of probably the most convenient one, at least for me, is to install a tool like ngrok that you know allows you to work locally and expose the local basically web server the port uh, globally well publicly so that google sheets can access it so that's one option to do it another option is using a uh, cloud-based ide such as gitpod or github code spaces um, there is uh, there are other um, videos online on, on the Excel Wings um, YouTube channel, and there are other webinars 
or other um, GitHub repos where I have instructions for how to use the, the Git pod and where it basically, you know, pulls up a pre-configured environment that exposes the right port. So it's sort of like really plug and play also like a very, very um, good option to work with that. Um, another option you have is basically you can set up like a deployment uh, pipeline so you can push your code to let's say github and then github is is connected with the you know the the server that um, automatically updates the server that's also a pretty painless way of handling things so um these days it's pretty quick to to do redeployments usually so that's another option and then i guess um sort of like a fallback solution is to use the local installation of excel um, that also works to a certain extent the api is cross-platform compatible but obviously the uh authentication specific part wouldn't be uh you wouldn't be allowed uh, you know uh, able to test that one because that is uh google sheets specific and then finally for deployment, um, it basically works anywhere uh, where you can deploy a Python web app. Um, there is just like uh, two services that I would like to point out, uh, not because I have any affiliation with them, but simply because I think um, it's they, they do a good job. Um, one is uh, render.com and you will see uh, like a deploy to render.com button on, on these uh, uh, repositories. Uh, it's a super slick solution to deploy a, a Python, Python app uh, or like a, a Docker app. And um, they have a free tier. So basically you can play around with multiple apps for free. They just fall asleep and then next time you use them again, um, it, it just takes like an extra 10, 15 seconds for them to wake up. And uh, the other one that I would like to point out is Google Cloud Run. I think this is sort of like pretty close to Google Sheets. Uh, I assume you are like on this Google Cloud platform in, in some way. So Google Cloud Run is definitely a, a very interesting option to look at. Um, what, what these options have like in common is they just accept a Docker file in your repository. And both of these repositories that we have looked at today, they both have a Docker file. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing here like the, the Zen of Python by just you know, pointing out that deploying your application as a, as, a, as, a, as a container through a Docker file is super awesome because that makes you so flexible. I mean, you can... These days, it's like almost every vendor has a service that will build a, a, a container based on like this Docker file. So it's almost just like a, a vendor agnostic configuration file. And that is, it's, it's super reliable. It's super quick. And as I said, it's uh, sort of like vendor independent. And Google has sort of an edge there with Google Cloud Run because um, it's it's actually pretty easy. I mean, you know, given the the average service in in in, in the Google Cloud uh, platform, it's very easy to deploy. I, I actually was my first. I actually was successful on my first attempt to connect it a to to the GitHub repository, um, give it you know set up some environment variables that are required. And then, uh, yeah, it automatically builds when you push to the GitHub repository. It's you can choose like uh, you know the the scaling, so it can actually scale down to zero, uh, zero running containers in in you know which moment it will not cause you any any um, any costs. So it sort of like behaves a bit like the free tier on render. Um, it it'll just wake up when you need it, and um, you are then uh well presented with a bit of waiting time but that definitely drastically cuts down the costs uh, specifically like let's say you, you do some machine learning and you only from time to time need a really powerful machine then um you will have that power available you know whenever you need it and and, and outside of that window um, it'll not cost you a cent. And so it's sort of like uh, similar to, to like maybe the AWS uh, Lambda functions, 
but with the big difference that you can just throw um, a, a Docker file, a container at it, and that means you're free to use whatever you need. So we can use our fast API backend and everything just works. Whereas, um, you know, AWS Lambda would be requiring you to like use their specific uh, syntax to, to, to use that. There is other services, definitely. I'm not the expert there, neither. Uh, so, uh, for example, on AWS, there is, I guess, um, AWS Fargate that goes into the direction. But from what I understand, it's much more involved in what you have to configure there. Um, definitely a similar service is available on, on Azure, too. But yeah, as I said, um, you know, given that we're dealing with Google, <laughs> with the Google Cloud, Google Google Sheets, I thought um, a Google Google Cloud service is, is is probably a bit closer um, than the other vendors. But definitely, super super open to use any any of 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 your preferred deployment mechanism. Okay, so let me see. That's uh, pretty much it. So uh, yeah, as a closing remark, um, I would like to mention that the uh, remote, uh, the the remote, uh, the remote interpreter that we use from Excel Wings in connection with Google Sheets, that's still pretty early stage. But as you have seen, I mean, sending back and forth uh, a data frame from uh, from code that is just super powerful and i guess i mean even at this stage is already you know able to replace a couple of different add-ons i mean you, you you may be using a certain add-on that you know gives you a, a connection with a certain database and then you use another add-on that maybe connects you with another service and so uh yeah uh as i said i guess it's early stage but i mean it's it's already like this it's super powerful and uh, yeah, with that, I guess I'm at the end. And let me just um, see if there's any uh, chat messages that uh, like I could answer. So there is one um, that asks, is there a way to, let me just rearrange that here okay so is there a way to send for example a matplotlib graph from python google sheets using excel wings um i hope there will be so that's one of the things that's currently available in the classic uh in, in the classic version of of excel wings and um i agree that this is probably one of the next things that i will be looking into because um i've actually seen that the google sheets charting has its limits so that would definitely be a, a good next point uh, for me to tackle but not today unfortunately um so another question is could uh google collab be used for hosting the repo um no so google collab is a um a jupyter notebook service and that is standalone you could probably you know for development or like intermediate usage you could probably spin up um like a web app within within the google google cloud la uh, google collab but then you still need to expose it to 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 Google Sheets, so I don't think that's possible. So I would say it's a hard no. Uh, in fact, I would like say you know you could. Re but what what I like personally have done is like I replaced my Google Colab sort of like reports I had previously in Google Colab. I replaced them with Google Sheets and a Python backend because. It gives me a lot more power. I have control over the Python runtime. I don't need to like reinstall the same packages all over again, or basically, you know, be dependent on on their uh, basic package supply. And I don't need to run that uh, Jupyter notebook to to get my up to date figures. So I simply trigger, uh, you know. A, a, Basically, the, I, I set up a, a, a scheduled trigger here to like rerun my code in, in Google Sheets. And whenever I need it, um, it's, it's already updated. 
And then, yeah, will this recording be available for future viewing? Yes, it will. And where can we find further documentation on this topic? Um, right. So, yes, um, it, it, it is recorded and you will get an email somewhere between probably now and tomorrow um, with basically the, the, the recording. And you can get more information on the docs. Um, and I will paste that right in the chat. So it's basically all filed under the remote Python interpreter. Um, yeah, bear in mind it's it's early stage. The, the documentation may not be top notch. So like if you run into any issues, if you need help with anything, then drop me an email and uh, we can definitely take it from there. Okay, so uh, from my end, that's that's all that I had for today. Um, I'll give you a few more seconds to to send over more questions. Um, if if you would like to, you know, schedule a a follow up call, if you would like to like go into more details, then you could uh, also schedule a call with me here on my Calendly. I just also dropped that in in the in the chat. Uh, so I understand it's like it's a it's it's a whole new concept. It basically brings all the, the web technology into place. But as I said, I think it's super powerful. It's it's great because you can really appreciate or like you can really leverage the, the latest features in, in, in the Python language. That was super difficult to do uh, previously and yeah super excited to to move this forward all right so i guess no more questions for today in in that case uh thank you so much for joining and um hopefully see you at the next webinar make sure to sign up for the newsletter or follow me on, on linkedin or twitter you will find all the links at the bottom of excelwings.org the homepage. all right Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Have a great rest of the day. All right. Bye, everyone.